everybody! Today I will be showing you how to make fabric snack pouches. Um, now I say that they're snack pouches, but you can really use them for anything that you would use a plastic Ziploc bag. So this could be um, toys, it could be makeup, um, you can put tools or your uh, crocheting or your knitting supplies or your sewing supplies. Really anything that you would use a Ziploc bag for. This is just a more eco-friendly option and it's just cute. So I have a few options or a few different snack pouches that I've already made that I'm going to show you. Um, this is a pink, you can kind of see the, the heart, so it's a nice rich pink with little white hearts. And on the inside I have chosen a um, kind of a a denim chambray fabric with matching pink velcro. I have a snack pouch with, um, I've used 100% organic cotton with Dr. Seuss the Lorax print on it. So, um, little Lorax print with uh, pink fabric on the inside and blue velcro. Then I have this one of my favorites, it's, um, the outside fabric is called Crystal Arrowheads. It's from a designer named April Rhodes. Um, I think it's for Art Gallery Fabrics. It's a really nice, lightweight, I made a few infinity scarves with it. And then a, a cool little uh, teal interior with pink velcro. So I just like to make everything matte, contrasting but match. Um, and then one of my Another one of my faves is the Circus Village Snack Pouch. So it's a fun little um, pattern with Circus Village tents. And on the inside, I've chosen a matching uh, purple fabric or burgundy fabric to match the one of the pillars and a blue piece of Velcro. So you can choose anything, any fabric that you want. You can make the inside match, you can make it not, um, you can use all the same fabric. It's really up to you. I mean, whatever you think looks good, or if you're making it for a loved one, um, whatever you think that they would like. Now it's important to start with all pre-washed and pre-shrunk fabric because um, we're saying that these are reusable washable snack pouches we want to make sure that they won't change or they won't warp in the wash so by pre-washing all of your fabric and pre-shrinking it in the dryer then we, um, we can fully say that they're washable and reusable today we are going to be making a snack pouch with um, the outside fabric will be this fun black and white geometrical um, fabric. It's got a little bit of stretch, but you don't need stretch. You can just use like 100% cotton, craft cotton. Um, I wouldn't use a knit because that's so stretchy. Um, just use craft cotton is your best bet. So you have the outside fabric and so the outside fabric, you need two pieces. This is what you see on the outside, two pieces, and each piece of fabric that you will have today, every piece of fabric, will be seven inches by six and a half inches. So every piece of fabric, um, to ensure that all of your pieces are the same size, you can do two different things. So you can make, um, <clears throat> a pattern piece or a stencil using paper or a piece of kind of stiff cardboard or cardstock and just measure it and then lay it on or pin it on to your fabric and cut from there. I did that for a while and I found it was quite tedious doing that. So what I do now is I have a uh, rolling cutter by Fiskars. So I have that, and then I have a Fiskars cutting mat, and then a ruler. So instead of cutting a piece of cardboard, um, 
I use a ruler and I just lay my fabric down and I use the ruler to cut around it. You don't need a ruler this ginormous. In fact, this gets in the way sometimes. I, if it was half this size, it would be perfect. So, whatever you have, whatever you want to work with. And you want your inside pieces. Again, the same size. I have chosen this fun pink fabric. It has little white notches through it, so not just plain white. I like to make it a little sassy, um, but it does still, it's a nice contrast, okay? So you'll need two interior pieces of fabric, seven by 6.5 inches. And then you have two two pieces of interfacing. I use, and I would highly recommend, I don't know how you would do the other kind, uh, fusible interfacing. So fusible means that with heat, it will fuse to your fabric. Um, today I'm using lightweight fusible interfacing because these fabrics are of decent weight themselves. I do, however, prefer to work with medium weight interfacing. It just kind of gives your fabric more um, durability and it's, I just like the feel of it. It's, it gives a stronger, uh, stronger snack pouch. But if you're working with uh, heavier fabrics, I mean, by all means, go with the lightweight. If you're using really low weight, um, light fabrics, I would recommend using a medium weight interfacing on the liner and then also a lightweight interfacing on the exterior fabric and that will make sure that you have a strong snack pouch. Totally up to you, you will figure out what works for you and go with that. So you will also need a pair of good quality sewing scissors that you only use for sewing because if you use for other things, it will dull the blade, make the blade dull. You will need a piece of Velcro, um, and this is for, of course, the Velcro seal. <clears throat> I chose pink because it'll match the, um, the color of the interior. Uh, your piece of fabric should be about five and three quarters of an uh, five and three quarter inches. Um, the original pattern that I used um, said to make it six inches, but I made I found that it made the snack pitch a little too tight. It was kind of pushing out on the sides, so I like to knock it down by a quarter inch or even sometimes half an inch. Um, depends on the pouch. So you have your Velcro, um, a good test to see if it's good quality is just to give it a rip, just rip it down. If it gives a decent amount of resistance and it's kind of difficult to open, then you probably have a good piece of Velcro. Um, you don't want it to, to be super loose because over time Velcro is going <clears> to <throat> weaken and loosen anyway. Um, and then all your snacks and your makeup will fall out of your pouch. So make sure you start with a good quality Velcro. I buy mine, I, in fact, I buy most of my sewing tools, um, my interfacing, and some of my fabric from Fabricland. I'm from Canada, so um, I think Fabricland is either um, all over Ontario or all over Canada. I am. Um, I have a membership there, so I get discounts and special sales. Um, so I buy my Velcro from uh, Fabricland, and I find that it's pretty, pretty darn good. Another thing you will need is a point turner. Um, you will need this for when you turn your pouch right side out. And you'll have these little corners that'll be kind of weak corners and you need a point turner to kind of shove in that corner to make it turn out to make it crisp um, and beautiful so a point turner not expensive i bought mine for 249 today um good investment 
if you don't have this on hand, another good thing to use is a seam allowance uh, ruler. Now you will need this for its main purpose as a seam allowance ruler, um, but also it's good. It has a little sassy arm over this at the, the top that you can use to jab into the corners or you can just use the end um, to make the corners come out. And then you will of course need thread. Um, I've chosen white thread because it matches my black and white fabric. Um, you won't, um, we're not top stitching at all with the white thread on the, the outside fabric, but it's just good to have matching thread. So if you, if you do happen to see a seam, then it's not this awful, if I use red thread, you, you would see it right through. And then also you need thread to match your Velcro because there will be a top stitch on your Velcro and you want it to look nice. And there will also be a tiny little top stitch on the inside fabric. So you want to have a, a thread that matches your um, inside fabric. So pink. And then of course I have a dish of pins. Okay. So the first step is to, and I'm going to use the magic of YouTube um, and film editing, you will take your fusible interfacing and your inside fabric. So you take your interfacing and one side will have these little tiny dots. They're glue dots. So that's what makes it fusible, these little glue dots. So you take it to your inside fabric and you turn it to the wrong side, so the, the side that you don't want to be seen, and you so you put your glue dots to the wrong side. Makes sense. <clears throat> and then you will take an iron. Uh, there's different methods you can use. You can use like a thin dish towel or I think some people use a damp dish towel. I just go straight up iron to fabric. Um, you can let your iron sit there for a bit um, to make sure it's all sealed, but that's that. So you're gonna reinforce both pieces of interior fabric with interfacing. And so the magic of YouTube or film editing, I'm gonna switch these pieces out with pieces that already have interfacing. So you can see this side is a little, little white dull because it has the interfacing. Okay, first step is to take your interior pieces of fabric and take, open up your Velcro. And so your pouch will be seven inches tall. You always want to orient and look at your pieces seven inches in height. So never do it the short way, always look at them tall. So you're going to take your piece of Velcro and you're going to take it to the top of one of your pieces. Now I just eyeball it to make sure it's in the center of the two sides. So I think that looks pretty darn good. And you want it to be half an inch from the top of your piece of fabric. So I'm going to take my seam allowance ruler and then just nestle it onto the top of my piece of fabric and make sure that the top of my Velcro matches. So just have to shift it. And you'll also keep measuring it all along the way when you are sewing, so it doesn't have to be exactly perfect right now. Um, for this step, for the first while when I was making these snack pouches, I would pin the Velcro, and it was such a pain in the butt because it would distort the Velcro, the Velcro is thick, it would, it just wasn't a good idea. So what I do is I hold it in place here, and I hold the front so it's going to be top left. I hold that. Bring my sewing machine. So I know that's in the center um, in terms of width. 
and then it's approximately half an inch from the top. And I'm gonna continue to measure it as I go. So I'm gonna stick the needle in to the very end. And here, so the needle is in, I have not stitched it all, but you can do a rough measuring. So I've measured the center at half an inch and I'm holding it there with my finger. So I know that I can do that full stitch or full seam stitch um, and know that it's half an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and now on the piece of velcro there's going to be a velcro in the middle and then a teeny weeny bit of unvelcroed tape. You're, want, you're going to want to sew on that piece of unvelcroed tape and as I go um, I am going to sew start here I'm going to sew all the way across and down and across and up but then I'm going to back stitch and then go across the center and then back stitch and finish finish it there this is so that um, it just secures the velcro a little bit more I mean you're gonna be ripping that snack pouch open again and again and you just want to make sure your velcro is there and secure so um, doing that middle stitch just helps it stay in place so I've, I've stitched or I've sewn to the middle and now I'm going to measure it a half inch to the end hold it there and away we go I've sewn the entire perimeter of the piece of velcro. I'm going to back stitch to the middle and then go down the middle. Back stitching, I did about four and then lift my foot. You want this to be on the front of your um, fabric, on the right side of your fabric. And the first time I made this, I totally sewed it on the wrong side because I was like, why do you want velcro on the front? If you look at the finished product, it makes sense. So you're seeing the right side, but on the inside. So you want it on the front. So you will see it's on the front and it has the seam down the middle. Voila. So we're going to go ahead and do that with the other piece. So now we have our two pieces of interior fabric, both with pieces of Velcro on them. Remember to backstitch um, when you're starting, down the entire perimeter, backstitch, and then across the middle and dock it there. So that's, we're set for the inside. Step is two. Take your inside fabric, take your outside fabric, and put them right sides together. So all you will see is the wrong sides. Now you want to match the tops. Okay, look at this fabric size and swapped. So match the tops. And I am going to pin in place because we are going to sew them together. So then the next step is to sew this together across the top, just across the top, nothing else. And you're going to use a quarter inch seam allowance so I use the corner I'm sure most people do with quarter inch seam allowance I use the side of my um, foot um, foot pedal pedal foot um, 
and to measure quarter inch. So I have a piece of fabric, two pieces, sewn together with a piece of Velcro in between. And if I open it up, it looks like this. Beautiful. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with the other piece. And you are going to iron these, the seam allowance. So open it up. And iron, am I opening it? Iron down the center. And then flip it around on the ironing board and iron this to make sure it's nice, crisp, open. Um, this will really make sure to that your snack pouch sits flat and kind of looks like a professional snack pouch. So go ahead um, and iron that. Okay, so now we have two pieces of fabric that has a nice crisp, crisply ironed seam. Um, nice. It's going to lay flat when it's officially a snack pouch. So the next step is to take your two pieces and you're going to flip this piece, doesn't matter which piece, you're going to flip them. Um, I use my Velcro as a um, calibrator or uh, a guide to put them together, but you want to make sure your Velcro matches up and you want to make sure your seams match up because you don't want, I mean a wonky snack pouch. Just doesn't look good. So take your Velcro and just line it up. So perfectly matched. And then I'm going to flip that over and see how that looks. So that, yep, that looks good in terms of this seam matching up and then the other side pretty darn good as well. So if you've cut your pieces, your fabric out properly and with exact measurements, then it should be pretty, pretty even like this. Everything looks good. So what you're going to do now is you're going to pin it all in place. So take your pins. Um, you want nice cr crisp corners, so I'm going to make sure to pin the corners. So we're all pinned up. I used a lot of pins. I mean, totally your style, what you like to do. Um, I like to make sure it's all in place. What you're going to sew now is you need a little, little pouch down here, a little open part in your um, the interior part of your pouch because you're gonna flip the whole pouch right side out through that, that little pouch, that little hole, sorry. So you're gonna sew from here, making sure to tack it to back stitch this side, all the way up, all the way over, back down and back. I would leave about, let's see, I mean, if you're using more like of a lightweight fabric, you could probably get away with the two inch gap. Uh, but since it's in the on the inside of your pouch, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna go with a two and a quarter inch gap, so I can make sure all the Velcro gets through. It's not stressing out the seam at all. Um, so yeah, two and a quarter inches. You can mark it. What I will do, I will put two pins to signal start here and end here. So, or you can use fabric pen. So we're going to go ahead and sew that. And you're going to use a quarter inch seam allowance again. So just use the side of your foot 
uh, as a guide. Now that I see what two and a quarter inch uh, inches look like for the gap, I think you could probably get away with two inches. I think that's fair. So remove all your pins and trim your seam allowance. It's not really necessary, but a good good idea is to trim your corners. Not too close to the seam, but just trim it so that they can turn out well and they're not all bulky. I do usually trim my seam allowance, so to be fair, go ahead and trim it. So I'm just going to about an eighth of an inch. Try to avoid the pouch. You want to leave the full seam allowance there. So now you have your sewn pouch and you are going to tackle it. Um, you're going to shove everything through <laughs> this little hole. So. Before we close that two inch gap, we want to take advantage of it and use our point turn. So we're going to put it in there and bring it to each point and push that point out. Make it nice and crisp. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, great. So we have all of our points, our corners, nicely uh, pointed out. So you're going to go ahead and iron this all nice. Iron the seams, iron the corners, and then you're gonna tuck the gap nicely so it matches up with the rest of the seam on the bottom so it's not lower or it's not higher. Pin it into place and then we're gonna do a top stitch just to close it up, okay? So go ahead and iron it. Okay, so I've ironed my pouch as it is so far. I've ironed in my little gap. You can see it's open right there. I'm going to pin it into place now. And I'm going to, just, just to make it easier for myself, I'm going to place a pin where I need to start sewing. So about maybe a half to a quarter inch before the gap. And then same on the other side. So yeah, I'd say a quarter inch is good. Again, going a little crazy with the pins, but I like things to be perfect. I've also gone ahead and uh, threaded my machine with matching thread for my pink liner. Um, for this one, I would say less than a quarter of an inch, so maybe an eighth of an inch um, seam allowance. You want to make sure that you're catching all that um, fabric on the inside and sealing it up well. So, eighth of an inch. And although it's on the inside, so you really really won't see it unless you are really nosy and you're poking in, um, you won't see it, but it's just nice to have a, you don't want a really big, ugly um, seam line. Pick a, it's nice to pick a thread that matches your line. Chose pink. So last step before you shove a whole bunch of snacks into it is to pop it back. It's hard to see because it kind of matches with my shirt. Um, so you're gonna put it in, shove it in, and you're going to make sure you kind of want the the outside fabric to kind of um, form a lip on the inside rather than the inside poking out. So when I'm looking on the inside, I should see a little bit of black rather than looking on the outside and seeing pink popping in. Just just the perfectionist in me trying to make it look perfect. Um, so a little bit of lip over this 
side, not too much. And then I'm just going to press this. So there we have it. We have a perfect snack pouch that you've made with your own hands and you can use it. You can give to a loved one. You can give it to your kids. I bet if they take it to school or daycare or nursery school, they will be the only kid with that snack pouch, which is great. Um, if you make your own snack pouch, please make sure to post um, your own below. I would love to see what you come up with. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, leave a question or a message below. Yeah, thanks so much for watching today. I'm glad uh, you stopped by and saw my tutorial on the fabric snack, snack pouch. Thanks.